Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Durber, and just delighted to be able to share with you in the truths of God's Word once again. Luke 137 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And yes, we're in Studio A for uh, this month, and I have a special guest that's going to be joining us over this next month. Uh, she has been instrumental in my life. Uh, she uh, She's an encouragement to me. She's a strength to me. And uh, I'm talking about my beautiful covenant wife, Alberta Derber. Y'all help me welcome Alberta Derber. Yeah. Hey, hon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is... This, it, it, this is uh, Christmas time, wow. and welcome to uh, Power of Faith. You've been watching me do it at home. We have our own program mm -hmm. here locally that we do together, but I asked you, would you come on with me uh, so that people can see that I really do have a wife, and that she's as beautiful as what I say. Exactly. <laughs> Amen. And it's Christmas time. It is. Wow. It came really fast. Yeah, but it's it's... It's it's a it's a wonderful time of the year. It's a great time of year. You know, with it, with it, with a lot of uh, challenges in the world. As Christians, this is our time to shine. Uh, you know, uh, it's always our time. To shine. Yeah, but I'm talking about Christmas. Even it's people that don't believe time. in God uh, or aren't born again, uh, they'll look at the nativity scene. You know, and and, and so on and so forth. But uh, it's an exciting time, and, and I'm glad you joined me because uh, I just want to share from our hearts to the people that are listening uh, what God has done to us mm. uh, in our lives in, as Dr. Fisher would say, 30-some, 30 30-some <laughs> 30 30 years. years. <laughs> Once you get past... Uh, when you get into decade counting, you just say some. <laughs> we were down there with him in Florida. And, How long have you been married, Dr. Fisher? You and Kathy, 50 some. <laughs> I said, I like that. <laughs> and you stop counting all that. 50 some. You ask the teenager how old they are, and they'll, they'll, they'll say 13, 13 <laughs> years old and seven months. <laughs> we get to where Three we round it off there. after a while. But, anyways, hope you all are. Uh, getting ready for a great Christmas time with uh, your friends and family. Listen, don't be concerned about finances, you know, and, and you know, I got to buy so-and-so a present because they buy me one and all that. You, you, you're getting under pressure. And uh, really, I want I want to share something uh, that happened to us right when we got born again, our very first Christmas. And, uh, you know, the scripture verse that is dear to my heart, I close up every one of our TV programs with it, is Ecclesiastes 8, verse 4. Where the word of a king is, there is power, and who may say unto him, What doest thou? Now, Alberta, when, when we got born again, you and I were right in the middle of divorce, mm -hmm. right? And uh, you made that vow. And three days later, God speaks to me in audible voice and totally delivers me from drugs and alcohol, puts our marriage together, and boom, 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 right? But you and I worked overseas, remember? Of course I remember. Making all that tax-free money. Yes. So, you know, we weren't, we weren't on skid row when we got uh, born again. We had some stuff. We had that eight-acre farm, four vehicles, you know, money, jewelry, you know, 
for me, guitars, you know, it and really was miserable. miserable. <laughs> really miserable. Miserable. And then when we got born again, God began to challenge us. Remember that? About sowing this, giving that. We didn't. Sure did. we, we were just so thrilled and happy. We were excited. Oh, my. We were excited about where God was going to take us. Yeah. Now, well, uh, you got born again on in 13 July. I got born again 16 July. So it was 1988, and uh, by the time Christmas came around, we had given away pretty much everything we had as far as finances and, and is concerned. We hadn't given away the farm yet and all no. that, but we were going to. Well, when you say given away, we, we sowed yeah. a lot. We gave away, gave away very little, but we sowed everything uh, yeah right right that's what yeah, i meant we, by don't, we don't just give away yeah well then jesus said give and it shall be given unto you so they're interchangeable yeah i understand we didn't give Even it away, away is we were expecting a return yeah. from the way we understood what we were being taught well we but, were giving because god said but uh what had happened was where i was used to buying you stuff that's whether you like stuff. <laughs> whether you liked it or not, I can't buy you nothing, and you can't buy me anything. We we're 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 at zero, and I get a call from a buddy of mine that we used to party and get crazy with. Uh, I was the best man in his wedding, all that kind of stuff, and he says, uh, "Philip, are you working anywhere?" Well, I was studying the word. God had told me to study the word, and I'm taking care of the farm. We had eight acres. And uh, I said, no. He said, well, can you help me out? It's, it's Christmas time. He was in the fireplace business. And, of course, it's big at that time. And uh, he said, I need some help. And I, know, he, I used to work for him. He said, I know you, you know how to do this. I said, no, I can't do it. And I hung up the phone. Well, when I did, the Lord said to me, call him back and help him out. I said, what? Call him back and help him out. I said, okay. So I called him back. And I said, okay, I'll help you. So uh, I go to work at his uh, store there, and there's this guy I don't know. And I can tell that he is just beat up by the world. Yeah. And uh, my buddy, his name's Mike. Mike says, uh, Philip, this is so-and-so. I don't remember the guy's name. We'll call him Johnny. This is Johnny. And uh, Johnny's going to be your helper. He needs he needs some work. And I told him I'd give him some work. I'm looking at this guy, and boy, I mean, he looks bad. And Run I, over by the world. And Yeah. And so I said, okay. All right, Johnny. So we loaded up the fireplaces and all the stuff that we're supposed to do that day. And uh, Johnny gets in the truck. I'm driving the truck, the work truck, and... and uh, you know, he's just staring out the window, you know, and and I start talking to him. Hey, man, what's 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 your deal? And uh, he said, oh, you know, just surviving, you know, all that, right? And I said, yeah, I used to be like that. And I said, I was a 14-year drug addict, drunk, drug dealer, criminal, locked up 20 times, looking at 21 years in the penitentiary, and he's sitting there. And it's like he came alive, Alberta. It's like, really? And I and and uh, uh, I said, yeah. That's that. I used to get crazy with the with the guy that's that we're working for right now. And he said, you don't do that no more. And I said, no, I don't do that no more. He said, how'd you stop? I said, I didn't really stop. I tried to stop. Mm. What do you mean? You didn't really stop. You still do that stuff? No. It was taken away. He said, how's it taken away? <laughs> I've tried to stop before. It ain't been taken away. I said, I met Jesus. Oh, now you know Jesus, right? And it's like, you know, you don't want to hear. So we get to the job site, and we're working around, and I'm just being super nice, you know, and and uh, so on and so forth, and, and you know, uh, Come lunchtime, I buy him lunch, you know, and that kind of stuff, even though we didn't have much money. And, 
didn't have any by then. Uh, he starts opening up. He starts telling me, you know, I tried to quit drinking. I, I keep doing stupid stuff every time I, I get drunk and I've ruined my uh, my life and all this and all that. And I, and I, and I kept telling him, I said, look, man, here's, here's all you need to know. I'm going somewhere with this. Those of you listening, watch what happens here because your, your testimony, you don't know, you yeah. never know. See, I could have been all concentrated on we don't have nothing for Christmas and blah, 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 but I wasn't doing that. And I said, all you have to do is call on the name of the Lord. All you have to do is say, Jesus, take my life. Yes. Come, in, come into my life and change me, and he'll do it, mm -hmm. right? So afterwards... Uh, he said, you like deer meat? I said, and I'm thinking, we ain't got nothing at the house. I said, yeah, I like deer meat. He said, well, if I had a gun, um, I can go to my parents' farm and shoot deer for free. And I said, well, I got a gun. He said, you got a gun? What kind you got? I said, I got a Marlin 30-30. And, and he said, that'll do it. And I said, okay. I don't give it to you. I've heard it. He said, what? You mean, you mean you're going to loan it to me? I said, no, I'm going to give it to you. They just don't I don't need it. He said, you going to give me a gun? I said, I'm going to give you a gun. He said, you give me a gun, I'll, give you, I'll get you deer meat. I said, all right. So at the end of the day, uh, uh, he drove me to the, to the farmhouse, our little farmhouse there. I went inside and got that gun. You said, where are you going with that gun? And I said, I'm going to give it to this guy out here. I don't need it. Praise God. And you wanted to see that gun out of the house anyway. I did. I don't. <laughs> I, I, I'm not for taking guns away from people by no means, but I don't like guns. <laughs> I don't even like them around me. Yeah. I don't know why. I just. You ain't been around them. Yeah. So uh, I gave him the gun. He left. Went to work next day. You ain't there. Right. That's right. Yeah, what happened to him? And my, my buddy said, what'd you do to that guy? I said, I don't know he's where he's at, man. I don't, I don't know what's going on. So I did I did a couple more days for my buddy. He helped him out. And then, uh, you know, I said, I, I'm done. I helped you get over that hump. Now I'm, I'm going to go back to studying the Bible like I'm supposed did to Did he do. ever come back? To work? No. Oh, I didn't know that. No. I made so, them back then. So now, now, here it is, Christmas Day, and and we don't have nothing. We don't have nothing. But we set the table. I remember we set the table because I had all Christmas tablecloth napkins from living overseas. I bought all the real nice stuff before. So you went ahead and set the table. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? And For more than just you and I, though. Yeah. So <laughs> you setting it in faith. Of course. So we spent the morning praying and in the Word, you know, encouraging each other. And in the back of my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of bummed out in the back of my mind. But in my heart, I'm joyful. I'm thankful. Right? To back of your mind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. And we're sitting, at, yeah. we're sitting in, in the kitchen mm -hmm. around the table. got the two dogs and the cat. And all of a sudden, the front door. Front door. Nobody came to the front door unless you were a, a stranger. There, all the, all the friends and family came to the back door, and we looked at each other. And I said, "We had two front doors. One, two, three front doors." Yeah, but we only that one was three the main. front doors in that little house. <laughs> <laughs> one so in the I, dining room. One in the kitchen. Uh, the bedroom. And then the other one in the, the studio. studio. Yeah. And so uh, I went to the front door and I said, guy. He said, Philip, I got that deer for you. This is Christmas Day. I look out in our driveway and there's this beautiful, shiny, black Mercedes, right? <laughs> and there's a woman sitting in it. And, she, and, and he says, my mom wants to meet you. She wants to know, can she come in and talk to you? I'm like, who is this, you know? And I said, well, sure. 
So he runs back and, and, and tells her to come on. She gets out of the car. She's got her hair all done up. She has this mink on. And, and you could tell the way she walked, she was a woman of wealth. And he opens up the trunk and pulls out this big cooler and brings it in the house, sets it down. And it it wasn't just deer meat. It's all packaged. It all it been packaged. In different yeah, it, uh, hamburger patties. All that. Spare all, ribs. <laughs> I, every, it, it was just wonderfully put together. And and when she, when I look at her, she got diamonds and all this. You know, she's just elegant. And she comes in, of course, you know, have a seat, ma'am. She sits down. <laughs> and uh, you're sitting here. <coughs> I'm me. sitting at the head of that little antique table we had. She's sitting right there, and her son is beside her. And she sits down, and she does this. She looks me right in the eye. And she says, yep. You're one of them. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh boy. I said, I said, you know what? What? She says, you want them Pentecostals? Yeah. I wanted to meet the man that changed my son's life. Wow. He's over there. He's beaming. His whole countenance has changed. And I said, uh, well, what, what? What's the story there? Tell me the story. And so what had happened was uh, he'd gone home, grabbed that gun, went out in the field, and he said to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to do what Philip said. Hmm. Well, by himself. I'm asking you yeah. to come in my life and take all this out of my life. Mm -hmm. And he said it was gone. Thank you, Jesus. And then there was two deer. Yeah, that's right. Two of them stood there. They were right there in front of me. And I thought to myself, well, I'll get one of them. Yeah. And he said he he he, he, he drew a bead Shot on that one, one and, and fired and, and dropped it. And the second stood, one just, just stood, stood there, like, waiting. Like, I, hurry <coughs> up, get this over with. No, I He said, I've never had that happen. Come to find out this woman, she owned a thousand plus acre uh, farm there uh, somewhere near Lexington, Kentucky. And uh, she said, where do you go to church? And I told her what church we went to. And she said, yeah, me and my husband helped build that church. Now, Alberta, listen to this. You remember the story about the centurion? Yeah. That, that his, that his uh, daughter was dying? Yeah, of course. The elders said this to Jesus. I thought about this. He hath built us a synagogue. Mm -hmm. He loved the Jewish people, the centurion. He loved the Jewish people and had built uh, them a synagogue, helped build it. Well, this woman had helped build it. And then when that centurion's, what is his daughter, was at the point of death, yeah. boom. boom. He got his at least, you know, a, a harvest off of getting in the father's business, building that synagogue. Here she is, <clears throat> help build that yeah. church where you and I would uh, learn the basics. Yeah, I don't remember her saying that. Boy, I don't know how I missed that, but I was probably walking around or doing something with the dog. Or, but I, I didn't remember that. Yeah. I mean, everything else I remember. I, and I'm like, how, how? Unique is that, that the church where we're going to, this wealthy woman and her husband, years prior to it, had contributed a lot of money to help that church be built. And that would be the church we would go to, and God would use me to witness to her son through a, a, a meeting uh, at a job site, and boom, <laughs> He gets yeah. born again. That was our first Christmas, huh? You talk about when they left, we looked at each other, and we were just having a good time. You remember that? Yeah, but I remember, I, I was trying to remember, was it just us there? Yeah, just us four. And we were only there 
for one Christmas at the mm -hmm. farmhouse. That's right. We came right after that. We came back from the islands in January. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. But the point being is, listen, uh, Christmas is not a time of how many gifts you can uh, get or give. And I know you, if you're a believer, I know you know that, and I know you want to bless your children and so on and so forth. I remember uh, in our Bible study that we first had, the lady that, that was in one of our Bible studies was all bummed out. It was Christmas time. I said, what's your problem? And he said, a son wants a set of drums, and I, and I can't afford it. I said, well, then explain that to him. And, and tell them to use your faith, and then, you That's know, right. maybe next Christmas or your birthday or next year, Mommy will have enough money or whatever, or, or Jesus will provide it or whatever, whatever, whatever. She didn't do it. She went out and well, borrowed was, and everything to get them drums. I think that was the last she was in church, too. He played them yeah, one, one time. time, never touched them again. Oh, See, so Chris, Christmas is, is... And she fell out with God, yeah, too. Christmas, well, she came back, though, before she left this planet. Yeah, that's Christmas, right. that's Christmas right. is a time of... Giving. <laughs> yeah, but there's more to give than material absolutely, things. Absolutely, absolutely. What, 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 what can you give to Jesus? Mm, Leading somebody to the Lord? Spend Deco time decorating his kingdom with another soul? You know... Uh, It'd be interesting to know uh, where that young man is now, you know? Yeah, he never, ever, ever heard anything. He might be, he might be pastoring somewhere. He might be on the mission field somewhere. Oh, he, he oh as another, here's another thing, too. She told me, Alberta, she said, we were getting ready to cut him out of our will. Now, now her will? <laughs> he, he's, the only, he's the only child? And, and he's going to inherit that? They were going See to that, cut. good God is. Good. God saved him. I mean, really, I got to watch how I say that because it sounded like God chose to save him. Yeah. You know how some people believe mm -hmm. that God picks you. And, yeah, you know, right, right. Like he has favorites, and you don't have favorites. He he favors our faith. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think we were talking about that the other night, how... No matter how we tried to get away from each other, I mean, there was no way we should even be together. But God, because God had a plan, mm -hmm. and we had praying mamas too. We did, yeah. I can remember not thinking thinking that my that God didn't hear my mother's prayers, because she's Catholic, mm -hmm. and uh, and when I got born again, the Lord told me, He said, if it wasn't for your mother being in my face. Mm -hmm. over you. It mm -hmm. was your mother. But mm -hmm. I always thought it was my friend David. And, yeah. Uh, well, wow, our time's getting away from us. And uh, just want to make you aware of a couple of things here. This is a book uh, that I wrote. It's called Precious Moments. Uh, this is all the miracles that happen uh, out at the farm. Those early days. We were only there for nine months. Nine months. The birthing, from the time, birthing yeah, time. From the time we got born again. You talk about miracle after miracle after miracle, from the sheep to the well to the electricity and water in the barn in 21 days with no money and, and just on and on and on. We saw more miracles just at the farm. We saw, we continue to see them, but we saw more miracles at the that nine months at the farmhouse uh, from the time we got born again, was mm -hmm. it nine months? Or mm -hmm. uh, then... Most Christians didn't most see even, it their entire life. Yeah, most even see, they don't even see one of them. I want to make you aware of uh, some CDs. I have a Christian band called the RVN Band. You can go to our website, rvnband.com. The information's down there on the bottom. And uh, we got several albums, but uh, these albums, uh, we recorded this last year. It's a Christmas album, Noel. And if you want to, if you like music and you're looking for something different besides the traditional music, we, we write all of our own music. This is, this is a powerful uh, 
CD is fun. Uh, it's called Noel. And then we did this Patriot. We did these three albums this <laughs> just, year. Just, uh, My just a goodness. Little bit ago. We the people. If you're an American, I mean, this is not a praise and worship album, nothing like that. It, but it's it's uh, all about uh, patriotism, and uh, it it'll bless you if you if you got red, white, and blue blood. Yeah, kind of. To me, a little bit of it was was praise and worship to God. Well, yeah, God that's country. because you were praise and worship. <laughs> and then uh, uh, all of my heart, now, now this is a praise and worship album. Mm, yeah. And you know this this I'm getting better more. I'm getting better feedback than I thought I would from this album. It's it's better than what I thought. But this one right here will be out next week. Victory is sweet. And again, it's another praise and worship album. Those are all available at the rvnband.com or you can go to our uh, faithvictorychurch.us and scroll down to the bookstore and locate stuff there uh, as well as the book. And uh, hey... Be a gift for yeah. Christmas. Be a gift. And uh, just look in ways that you can give to help advance God's kingdom. Again, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4. Thank you for being with me. You going to be with me all week? All week. All month? All month. All month. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4 says, Where the word of a king is, there, there is, is power. power. Be a blessing. Faith programs are available on YouTube 24-7, so you can watch from anywhere at any time. Search for Power of Faith on YouTube or go to youtube.com forward slash power of faith. Subscribe and click the bell to make sure you're notified whenever new episodes are posted. If you missed the episode or you just want to go back and watch it over and over again, the Power of Faith YouTube channel is there for you.